Okay, good afternoon everyone. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Welcome to 5 p.m. service. Medyo nagulat kayo na sino kaya itong nakatayo right now. My name is uh, Pastor Christian, one of the pastors here. And I'm really encouraged, sobrang encouraged po ako that you are here. Uh, even sobrang lakas ng ulan. Kanina while I'm looking at those people na pumapasok dito, may mga dala kayong payong. Kasi sobrang lakas talaga ng ulan. But yet, I just want to say thank you for coming. And uh, ako po yung magpipreach today. And I hope that you will be encouraged as well and be excited as well. But before anything else, how many of you here you appreciate Pastor Richard? Appreciate you, Mr. Pastor Richard? Yan, talaga may palak pa ang Pastor Richard. <laughs> and and uh, sobrang I look up Pastor Richard uh, every time na nagpipreach siya. Kanina po nagpreach si Pastor Richard from 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. So nag-switch kami. Normally, I preach at 1 p.m. And uh, sabi ko nga po sa inyo, sobrang excited ako today because we're going to talk about a very specific topic uh, na sobrang dear for all of us. But before anything else, let me just greet everyone sa lahat po ng Tatay Airpads. Uh, uh, ano pa ba mga tawag natin? Daddy, uh, Papa, Popsy, uh, Upa. Yan, Upa. So sa lahat ng Daddy dito, Happy Father's Day. Come on now. So lahat po ng mga tatay dito, can, can I ask everyone to stand up? Tayo po tayo. Mga tatay, okay? Anyone? Any dad in the house? Can you just stand up for us to recognize naman? Ayan, mga loving father. But okay, may, uh, tayo lang kayo, tayo lang kayo. Ayan, ayan. Um, let me just take this opportunity to really uh, acknowledge and also thank you for your dedication, for your heart, for doing everything just for you to provide for your family. And most especially for impressing Jesus sa, sa buhay ng, ng pamilya ninyo. And uh, kami po dito sa, dito sa atin, sa church natin, we really value family. That's why we want to take this opportunity as well to pray sa lahat ng tatay na nandito. Can we just lift our hands to them? Yan. At even doon sa mga tatay na nanonood, nakatune in right now, we want to take this time to pray for you because we really appreciate you, Upa. Okay? Uh, let's just pray. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, God, because these fathers that we have right now standing before you, God, I know that you have, you place a calling in their lives. And that is to be a loving father, a loving leader as well. Lord, thank you because it is you who will give them wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and how they may be able to put things in order in all the things that they are doing right now. Lord, I pray that you will just bless them so much. I pray that they will, they will always have this heart, Lord, wherein they will say that my family is blessed through me because they, you called them to be the leader of their house. Lord, maraming maraming po salamat for all the promises that you've given them personally and also the calling that you've placed in their life as the leader of their family. Lord, bless them. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen and Amen and Amen. Palampan po ulit natin ating mga tatay na nandito. And also, uh, meron po kami special treat sa inyo. Right after ng uh, service natin, katulad ng in-announce namin, we have something for you. Pwede po tayong pumunta dun sa may foyer later. Meron po tayong, uh, magkakaroon po tayong simple fellowship, may pakapi po tayo dyan, at meron tayong tinatawag na patron. Ayan, patron. <laughs> okay? So, so speaking of patron, um, natutuwa po kasi kung merong patron, ang pag-uusapan po, na, po, po naman natin ngayon ay centurion. <laughs> okay? So somehow connected, but uh, yung, yung, uh, yung words lang niya. Pero to be honest, uh, we're still in our series na tinatawag natin, As for Me and My House. And for sure, last week you were blessed uh, with the preaching of Pastor Richard, wherein we appropriate kung ano yung calling ni Lord para sa family natin, that we are blessed and we are called to be a blessing to others. And uh, right now, magda-dive naman tayo sa isang story that we can find it in Acts chapter 10. At pag-uusapan natin uh, dito ay isang centurion or it, uh, isang Roman army na pangalan niya ay Cornelius. And I hope that as we dive in the Word of God, uh, always be reminded the heart of the series is for us to know that we have to establish yung family natin in the standard of what the Bible is telling us. And at the same time, because we know who we are in Christ, eto po yung gagawin natin. 
we will impart it to our family, to our relatives, and all those people that we know. And this time, kapag nag-dive po tayo sa word natin, pag-usapan po natin tong about Father, I hope that you will open your hearts to receive something new from God. And whatever things that God will speak in your behalf, I hope that you will let the Holy Spirit work in and through you. Can I ask everybody to stand up and open your Bibles in Acts chapter 10, verses 30 to 33. So, I hope that you have your Bibles with you. Uh, free lang po ang mga application ng Bible. You can download it if you have a smartphone or, el- or kaya naman po, if you have your own uh, physical Bible, it would be better for you to bring the, your physical Bible as well so that you can follow us. But if you're coming here for the first time, meron po tayo dito sa screen so that you can follow us as well. It says here in Acts chapter 10, verse 30 to 33, And Cornelius said, Four days ago, about this hour, I was praying in my house at the ninth hour. And behold, a man stood before me in the bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon, a toner by the sea. So I sent for you at once and you have been kind enough to come. Now therefore we are now, therefore, we are all here in the presence of God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. Let's just pray. Lord, we just want to say thank you for the reading of your word. I pray that you will use my mouth to speak life and encouragement. Lord, I pray that you will anoint the preaching of your word and prepare our hearts to receive something new from you, God. Lord, thank you. Let the Holy Spirit work in and through, in and through us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen and amen. You may take your seats. Actually po, uh, like what I've said, what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about this name, the story of Cornelius. Maybe some of you here, this is the first time narinig ninyo yung name na Cornelius. Let me just ask this question. Sino dito somehow familiar kayo sa name ni Cornelius? Wala pa masyado. So, so for you to have a background of kung sino si Cornelius, who is Cornelius? Sino ba tong Cornelius na to? Cornelius was a Roman centurion who live in Caesarea, he is not a Jew, and he is a Gentile. So, ibig sabihin na ito, yung, yung um, Rom, ano siya, uh, Roman centurion siya, ibig sabihin, ang pag-Roman centurion, normally, they, they, um, they are a captain. Parang captain sila ng almost a hundred army, at uh, sila yung nagbibigay ng command dito. And at the same time, sinabi to, he live in Caesarea, where in Caesarea is the capital of Rome, uh, Rome province of Judea. Meaning, nandun din siya sa loob ng Israel. At that time, marami sila na-experience na issue. At isa sa mga issues na na-experience nila, dumadami yung Jews in that Caesarea. Dumadami yung mga Jews were in nakikita talaga na, na, ng mga Roman centurion na kailangan nilang to do something about it. And not only that, siya rin ay isang commander in Italian regiment of the Roman military. Meaning, kapag may cohort siya, almost 600 na army or armies yung hawak niya. Very disciplined, well-skilled, and not only that, uh, experience, at ang equivalent neto ngayon sa atin is somehow a captain. So meron ba kayong kakilalang captain except kay Captain Ray uh, ng ano yun? Crash Landing on You? Diba? <laughs> diba? Yun lang ba kayo lang naaalala na na captain? So, kinikilig talaga yung iba, no? Wala, nakasal na siya. Okay? But uh, more than anything else, eto yung itsura na si, si captain, uh, si captain tuloy, si, si Cornelius. Imagine, very skilled talaga siya. And high respected because of the position na meron siya. And if we're gonna, as we dive in the Word of God today, we will look on and even ponder in the Word of God. Titingnan natin yung story ni Cornelius at ano yung magiging impact nito sa buhay natin, most especially sa mga tatay. So titingnan natin yung buhay ni Cornelius, and at the same time, as we dive and ponder in the Word of God about the story of Cornelius, titingnan din natin kung ano yung magiging impact nito sa mga magulang at sa mga anak na meron tayo. And uh, uh, if we're gonna try to look at this word, parati natin tinatanong dito sa, sa, sa story na to, or in, titignan natin yung story na to, na meron talaga mga biblical truths tayong pwede mapulot sa story ni Cornelius. And today, I'm gonna share to you two things. 
two biblical truths that we can find in this story where in ano ba tong call ng Panginoon para sa mga tatay. Pero kung titingnan natin, ay, para sa tatay lang naman yata ito, paano ako? Ako yung wife. I am the wife. Kailangan, meron din ako marinig. Meron ka rin maririnig dito. Eh, paano yung mga anak? Meron din kayo maiintindihan dito because at the end of the day, the Word of God is like a double-edged sword that will penetrate our hearts. That's why hindi tayo lalabas dito without anything that is coming from the, from the, from, from the God that we are serving. So ano ba yung two things na pwede natin matutunan dito? Sa story ni Cornelius na isang Roman, uh, na isang, na isang uh, regiment ng Roman military na sobrang skillful, na sobrang experienced, at sobrang different sa ibang Roman military. The first thing I would like you to understand about this story is that God called fathers so they may experience the power of the gospel. Let me repeat that again. God called fathers so that they may experience the power of the gospel. It says in Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to 2, aside from the definition or description that I shared a while ago about Cornelius, si Minimulan uh, ni Paul, yung nagsulat neto, kung ano yung description ni Cornelius. Sabi dito, at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what of what was known as Italian cohort. Pag Italian cohort, kaya tulad na sinabi ko, mga 600 militaris to hawak niya. A devout man who feared God with all his, all his household, gave alms generously to the people and prayed continually to God. I just want you to focus on the description na sinabi din to kung sino si Cornelius. Sabi dyan, unang-una, si Cornelius daw, a devout man who feared God with all his household. Grabe, no? Kung i-imaginein mo, if he is a Roman military, dapat ang sinasamba nila pagan gods. Dapat ang worship nila like yung mga, yung mga, mga planets. They have different gods at that time. Pero dito, sinasabi dito na si Cornelius, who is a Roman military, He's worshiping a, dif- a different God. And not only that, sinabi niya dito, gave alms generously to the people. Meaning, itong si Cornelius, even nalalaman niya na sobrang laki na ng issue dun sa Caesarea because madami ng Jews na pumupunta doon at meron silang political issue as well and also economical issue. Alam niyo ba ginagawa ni Cornelius? Normally, tinutulungan niya yung mga poor people. It's totally different from the traditional or the common connotation of what a Roman army is. Ibang-iba. And finally, sabi niya dito, prayed continually to God. Imagine. Sino dito, I just want to ask, sino dito nag-ROTC ka? ROTC? Wala. Ayo oh, meron niya, meron. Kasi mabaya naman nag-ROTC, ibabalik daw yun. Joke lang. Okay. And also, CAT, CAT, CAT. Yan. Mga talupa doon manda. Talupa. Di ba? Mga ganun yun. So, imagine, nung na-ROT si tayo, si 80 tayo, sobrang busy natin. Di ba? Kasi kailangan mong kumatok ng three times bago ma... Sir, I'm going to salute you. I'm going to salute you. Mga ganun tayo. Kasi kailangan meron ano yun eh. Merong wake on how to, to salute eh. Tapos meron pa tayo mga opening ceremony. Mga talupa doon manda. Talupa! Gaganong-ganong ka pa. Di ba? O, oh, naaalala nyo, ha? Tapos mag-strat po ka, gaganyan. Oh, naaalala nyo yun. O, oh, yan, naaalala nila lahat. Sobrang busy natin. Try to imagine this Roman army. Gano'n kaya siya kabisi? 600 armies. Meron siya. Pero, he never missed to pray even how busy he was. He never missed hindi niya na miss magpray. No matter how great the responsibility that was given to him, ina-attend pa rin niya. Sabi dyan, continually, I prayed continually to God or always praying to God. It is a practice already. Sa Jews, meron sila normally they pray uh, dalawang beses, minsan tatlong beses, depende sa devotion na meron sila. But Cornelius, he never stopped doing it, even 
He is our Roman army. But even how good the description was about Cornelius, one thing is missing. Yes, maybe he is a devoted uh, Roman army to God, pero he never had an encounter with the true living God. Maybe some of the scholars were saying that si Cornelius daw parang ano, parang doing a religious, uh, religious act. That's why, that's why he was so devoted. He was doing uh, things generously, and also he was praying to God. But if you will try to imagine, sometimes we're like that. We will go here at the time, 9 a.m., 1 p.m., 5 p.m., worshiping God with all of your hands. With all of your hearts, eh. With all of your hands. Kasi tataas mo lang yung kamay mong ganon. Tapos iiyak-iyak ka pagdating mo, wala ka pa encounter kay God. Pagdating mo sa bahay mo, nandun ka na, umuupo ka na, iba na ang nagiging itsura mo. Alam mo yung si Goku? Pag si Goku yung nagagalit na, nagiging super science. Pag tayo, paglabas natin dito sa, sa hall na to, nagiging super science na tayo kasi may umagaw sa parking space mo. O kaya may naglagay ng something do sa, par- sa, sa kotse mo. O kaya may nakabangga ka dyan paglabas pa lang. Sino ba ito? Kapag worship-worship ko pa lang. Eh. Or because nagalit ka sa anak mo. Kasi sabi na anak ko, Dada, I want donut. Kakadonut mo lang kanino, dodonut ka na naman. How many of you can relate on that? Sometimes, we keep on worshiping God through our lips, but our hearts is not aligned to the hearts of God. But the great thing about it, ito po yung sobra maganda, God will never stop to reveal His presence to every one of us. He will never stop. You know what, what had happened after this? Sa so, sobrang ganda ng description kay Cornelius, nagkaroon siya ng moment to encounter God through an angel. It says here in verse 3, about the ninth hour, that is 3 p.m. Alam niyo yung 3 p.m.? Naalala niyo ba yun? Yung, yung sa mga TV station, pag 3 p.m. na, may lalabas na doon sa magpipray ka muna. Alam niyo kung anong station yun? About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius. So tinawag yung name niya. In the following verse, sinabi niya dito, and he started, I st- stared at him in terror and said, what it is, Lord. Try to imagine with me. At 3 p.m., when he's about to pray, nagkaroon siya ng vision. At yung vision na to, bigla may nagsalita sa kanya, an angel of the Lord. He was so terrified. And not just terrified, in other version, sinasabi dito, sobrang fearful siya. To the point, he doesn't know what to do. Kaya ang nasagot lang niya dito, what is it, Lord? Lord, ano yun? And he said to him, your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. Ibig sabihin, narinig ng Panginoon lahat ng prayers mo at lahat ng petition mo. Side note, how many of you here, you are grateful that every time you pray, you know that God can hear our prayers? Come on now. Grateful kayo? Masaya kayo? <laughs> diba? So, nasaya lang nun. And even dito, imagine, religious act, pero naririnig ng Panginoon. Parang tayo lang din. Ang dami natin pinagpipray, pero ang dami pa rin natin kasalanan na ginagawa. Ang dami pa rin tayong shortcomings kay Lord, pero sobrang faithful ni Lord para sa atin. And sabi niya, your prayers and your alms have ascended as a, a memorial before God. In the following verse, sabi niya dito, And now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon who is called Peter, his lodging with one Simon, a tanner whose house is by the sea. What had happened when he was praying, eto na nga, nag-appear yung, yung angel, nagsalita sa kanya, sabi ng angel, narinig ko yung prayers mo, eto yung gawin mo. Ang gusto kong gawin mo, I want you to send men to Joppa. 
Pag pinapunta mo sa sa Jopa, alam mo, kapag pumunta sila sa Jopa, I want you to bring, uh, and, and bring Simon, who's called Peter, he's lodging with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. Ibig sabihin, kailangan nila mag-travel for almost 48 kilometers para lang mapuntahan yung place na yun. The great thing about what had happened in this uh, situation, we all know Peter. Si Peter yung pinag-usapan. Si Peter who preached in Acts chapter 2, then so many people had add, uh, been added to the church, and they got baptized, repent and be baptized. Then so many things that happened from Acts chapter 1 to Acts chapter 9. Pinag-usapan dito is all about the conversion of the Jews. But nung Acts chapter 10, eto yung nangyari. We're talking about a Gentile. Gentile na nagkaroon ng encounter kay God at binibigyan ngayon ng opportunity to respond to that call. And he responded to the call of God. Sinend niya yung tao niya. Pero the question is, ano kaya gagawin ni Peter? Kung sinend ni Jesus, ay kung sinend ni, 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 ni Cornelius yung tao niya, alam kaya ni Peter na may isesend siya? Look how sovereign our God is. Cornelius had an encounter, but even in, also in Acts chapter 10, verse one, 11 to 12, Peter had, uh, had an encounter as well. Nagkaroon din siya ng encounter para maging swak yung ordained uh, thing that was gonna happen na ino-orchestrate ng Panginoon sa buhay ni Cornelius. And at the same time, may value kung bakit din kailangan si Peter yung makausap niya. Sabi niya dito, uh, at that time kasi, in, in previous verses, bago tayo mag, mag uh, Acts chapter 10 verse 11, eto na si Peter. Si Peter is about to go up on the roof and he's about to pray. Pero nung magpe-pray na siya, nagugutom siya. How many of you here experienced that? Papray ka na, lalo na, alam niyo nakakain na, no? Tapos, yung iba, nagtitinginan kung sino unang tutusok ng pagkain kapag nagpe-pray na. Meron ba kayong sa family ninyo? Alam niyo kung sino masiba? Alam niyo kung sino, kapag isang, isang buong lechon o kaya isang lechong manok, alam mo kung sino may paborito ng hita? Alam mo kung sino unang kukuha ng leeg? Alam mo kung sino unang kukuha ng pakpak? Sometimes pag nagpe-pray ka, kumakalam na yun siya, tapos tinitignan mo yung katabi mo. Sino bang unang tutusok? Pero ito, it's a different thing. So what had happened, when he was on the roof, and he's about to pray, nagugutom siya, and then this, this thing happened. In Acts chapter 10, verses 11 to 12, sabi dito, And so the heavens opened, and something like a great sheet descending. Ibig sabihin, pagtingin niyang ganun, para may great sheet na bumababa, being let down by its four corners upon the earth, and it were all kinds of animals. May mga animals daw na bumabaan. No? May kalasin ng reptiles, may birds of all the air. And not only that, in 13 and 14, sabi niya ito, and there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. So habang bumababa yung mga animals, sabi, ni, sabi ng, ng voice doon, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. When he heard that voice, he responded accordingly. Kasi bawal sa kanila. If we're gonna try to look on Leviticus and even in Ezekiel, hindi sila pwedeng kumain ng mga uncommon and also mga unclean food. Anything na merong four-legged um, animals. And not only that, and the voice came to him in verse 15. The voice came to him again a second time. What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times. And the, things, and the thing was taken up at once to heaven. Imagine, three times na to na visualize, three times na to nakita, pero hindi pa rin niya ma-interpret ko ng ibig sabihin nito. Let me put it in this way. Parang ganito yan. Kung tatitin na picture na to, uh, yan, ayan yung bumababa. Nagutom kayo, no? Tapos sasabihin mo, no! I'm not gonna eat that! Because it's unclean! Sino dito kaya kumain ng lamb chop? Yan, favorite. Steak, steak, steak. Yan, parang lahat kayo tinataas nyo pa rin, ha? Sino dito? Seafood. Anything that you see, it's food. Yan. 
Di ba lahat? So, paborito natin yan. So, imagine, para kay Peter, kahit ka animals pala yung bumabaksak, pero pag gutom ka na, yung animals yung ganyan na itsura. Tama ba ako? Kapag nabi-prayer and fasting tayo, di ba may prayer and fasting tayo, lahat na makita mo, masarap na. Lalo na pang for pag, pag last day na, miski yung amoy ng ano, kunyari, di, ano bang pinakatabi katabi natin kainan dito? Malayo yun, no? Uh, basta yung miski malayo doon. Pag nakita, pag naamoy mo yung roti, yung sa baba, kahit nandito ka, baka maamoy mo na yung roti sa gutom mo. Ganun. Imagine, ayan yung bumababa. Gutom na siya. Pero he said, no. I'm not gonna eat that. That's unclean. Pero in reality, when he was pondering it for the third time around, hindi niya talaga maintindihan to the point, ano ba ibig sabihin neto? Kailangan pang mag-appear ulit ng angel and to, give a vo- uh, and to share and to hear the voice of God. Sabi ng angel, there will be three men na dadating dyan and they will say something to you. They are all Gentiles. At that very moment, dun niya na-realize that the call of God that was given to him it's all about the relationship of the Jews and the Gentiles. For them kasi, they feel like yung mga Jews lang yung masisave. And they, need, they, they can't even associate with the Gentiles. They can't even go to the house of the Gentiles. Hindi sila pupunta doon. Kasi they're unclean. Pero sinasabi dito ni Lord, no, whatever is, what, what God has made clean, do not call it common. Ibig sabihin in Acts chapter 1.8 no sinabi ni Lord na you will be witnesses sa lahat then God is telling us that even Gentiles can be saved through God. Even Gentiles can be saved through God. And maybe some of you is asking talaga? So ibig sabihin yung kaaway ko masasave din? Yes. Yung mga, yung mga hindi ko gustong, gustong kaibigan, hindi masasave, rin masasave din. Yes, possible. Yung mga ka-office mate ko nag-uwi ng bank paper, masasave din sila. Yes. Possible. At yung mga naka, naka-work from home na bumalik na, na RTW, RTW, RTW naging ano yung mga damit eh. <laughs> mga, mga return, ano yun? Work, anong tawag doon? Return to office, RTO. <laughs> yon, Masisave din yon. Yes, it's possible. Pag-usapan natin yan later. And alam nyo ba, the funny thing about it, Peter responded to it. Pumunta si Peter. Sumama. At nung pagkadating na pagkadating ni Peter kay Cornelius, look how Cornelius responded to it. In verse 23. In verse 23, pausod ng <laughs> Hindi ko mabasa. Verse 23. Yan. Sabi dito, the other one. Acts chapter 10, verse 23 to 26. It says here, when Peter, paklik po. Yan. So he invited them to be the, to be the guest. And on the following day, he entered the Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them. And he had called together his relatives and his friends. And the following verses, when the angel who was spoke to had been departed, parang hindi ito yon. Yan. Ito na ba yon? <laughs> so, ganto na lang. Yan, that's one. 23 to 26, sabi dito, When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell down in his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I too am a man. Imagine when Peter, when they saw Peter, eto yung ginawa ni Cornelius, we worship niya. To the point, he, makikita lang din natin talaga na he's new in his walk of faith. He doesn't know who's really to worship. Even Peter, we worship niya. Even si Peter na commanded ni God na pupunta sa kanya, we worship niya. And he even forgot the only one that na kailangan niya i-worship is a God. But pagdating ni Peter, sabi niya, no, you don't have to worship me. You don't have to worship me because I am a man. At that very moment, 
Peter took the opportunity to preach the gospel to the Gentile. And if you will try to look at Acts chapter 11, sa Acts chapter 11, lahat yun report ni Peter kung ano yung experience niya. Ni report ni Peter kung paano nangyari, paano yung vision, at paano niya pinirit yung gospel. That's why in Acts chapter 11, verse uh, 13 to 14, sabi niya dito, and he told us how he led, how he had seen the angel stand in, her, in his house and say, send to Joppa and bring Simon who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message. That is the message of the, of the gospel. He preached the gospel to Cornelius and then by which you will be saved, you and all your household. The Bible is telling us that every time you will hear the word of God, there is a big chance for you to be saved as you accept the word of God, even your household. How many of you here, you are excited that someday, because you receive the gospel, you know the whole household, your whole household know, will be saved as well? Come on now. That is the very heart of God. Imagine God orchestrated everything. He needs to use Peter to preach the gospel to Cornelius and to all the fathers here. I want you to understand that God will do something in your behalf as well. As the leader of the house, as the leader of the house, God is at work in and through you. Remember, God is at work through the lives of our earthly fathers. Pero if you will try to look at it, Pastor Christian, parang dyan yata hindi tayo nag-agree. If, God, if I'm gonna try to look at my life right now, ang dami kong grievances sa father ko eh. Ang dami kong experiences in the past that I can even recall or I don't want to recall it. Simula nung pinanganak ako, hindi ko nga nakita yung tatay ko eh. Iniwan nga ako eh. How come you will tell me that the God that I'm serving is at work to my father? Is that possible? Go back to Genesis chapter 12. Ano bang promise ni Lord? That you will be blessed and even those people who are blessing you. You can appropriate that. There's so many stories that I can share to all of you on how a family was reconciled because they believed, they prayed, and they appropriate the promises that God has given them. And one of the promise is for us to declare that God is working in the lives of our earthly father. And I hope that someday you will be thankful to God because you know God is doing something amazing to your earthly father. And the last thing I really want to share to everyone is this one. God has called fathers to leave out the gospel and be a channel of blessing. Let me repeat that again. God has called fathers to leave out the gospel and be a channel of blessing. Now, Cornelius was able to receive the gospel. At alam niyo po ba, nakakatawa kay Cornelius when he sent his army to Joppa, ang ginawa niya in Acts chapter 10, verse 22, sabi niya dito, and they said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, ibig sabihin, God-fearing man, ito yung, uh, they're worshiping God, but yet, hindi pa niya pinafollow talaga yung set of rules and uh, things na being a Jew. Hindi siya circumcised, and also yung mga practices, hindi niya ginagawa. Pero, he's worshiping the one true God who is well-spoken by the whole Jewish nation. Imagine, highly respected siya, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have said. And in verse 23 to 24, this one I really like about this verse. So he invited them to be his guest list. And on the following day, they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. That's a very amazing picture. Yes, he was the one who, exp- 
who he was the one who heard the voice of the angel, pero hindi niya hinayaang na siya lang ang makarinig ng gospel. What he did was, he invited together his relatives and friends. Grabe lang yung heart ni Cornelius, no? Kung ako yun, hindi ko alam kung may isip ko pa i-invite yung fa- family members ko or even my friends. Because on the onset, hindi ko alam kung anong mangyayari. Kayo ba, i-invite nyo kakagad? Alam nyo kung anong mangyayari? Pupunta si Peter doon? Knowing na merong malaking, uh, malaking separation between gentle and Jews? Knowing the, that uh, Peter cannot even enter sa, sa, sa house ni Cornelius? But look at the heart of Cornelius. Intentional. That is the term. Intentional siyang isama yung relatives and even his friends. Try to look our place right now. Tingnan nyo yung mga upuan na yan. Na katabi nyo. Iba punong-puno na, iba wala, wala, walang upuan. Maybe because iba hindi nakarating dito. How amazing it is to see one of your friends sitting in that chair. Your loved ones. Na makikita mo katabi mo na worship kay God. Nakikita mo kat- na katabi mo na umiiyak para kay Lord. Nakikita mo sa- na katabi mo na merong encounter kay God. The word is intentional. Are we intentional in preaching the gospel? That is the key. Marami po tayong kabataan na nire-reach out right now. And every time na meron tayo na reach out na kabataan because they are very proactive, they are very um, passionate every time na nilalaman nila yung truth, they normally can contain it but to share it to their families. How many of you here you love Netflix? Movies? Korean novela? Yan. Di ba pag Korean novela, buhay na buhay ka? Ano, tip, tipong pag... Pag kinausap mo yung kaibigan mo, alam, maritesan na yan. Hindi ganito kasi yan eh. Si Cardo nga, hindi na naman namatay. Yung mga ganon. Tapos, alam mo yung mga movies na, grabe yung mga movies ngayon, na paglabas mo talaga, ay, gusto mo ikwento kahit kanino. Tapos, intentional ka, minsan, ano ka pa. Alam mo yun, nang-aasar pa talaga. Gusto mong asarin yung mga taong hindi pa nakakanot. Nakaka- spoiler ka, spoiler ka. Pero in reality, those things that we're gonna share will not impact and change the life of others. How much more the encounter that you have with God as you testify His goodness and His faithfulness. I'm really encouraging everyone. You're not here if someone did not took time to preach the gospel to you. And to all the fathers here, Pastor Jahe, kakaya mag-preach ng gospel. Parang, nawawala yung pagiging pagla- pagkalalaki tapos mag-worship ka, tataas mo yung kamay mo gano'n. Nakakaya. Pastor, medyo, ano eh, parang hindi ko kaya, natatakot ako. Hindi nga ako makapag-I love sa anak ko eh. Gospel pa kaya? I'm telling you, go back. God is working in you. God can use you. God can do something amazing in you. To the point that your family will experience blessing in and through you. Why? Because you are the head of the family. Inheritance, madali pong ipasa yan, lalo na kung mayroon ka naman na mana from one, from one uh, family to another, or dahil marami kang influence or anything, pero yung gospel po is something eternal. Every time that you pass the gospel to your family members, you know what? Yung buhay nila can be changed can be transformed the way you experience the gospel. I hope that we will take every opportunity for us to preach the gospel. That's why all the fathers here, we are called to leave the gospel. Pamuhay po natin yung gospel. Hindi po natin to kaya na on our own, to be honest. We need the grace of God for us to do that. We need fellow men to help us. Even kami po, pastor, ako, si, ako po, asa si Pastor Richard, we need people in our life to hand over, uh, to, 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 ano, ang tawag na, to lock, and mag-lock kami ganyan, para at least hindi kami masaken. We need that. Because God can use you 
to be a blessing. And the great thing about it, prior to, to, that, invi- to that invitation na meron si Cornelius sa family niya, sa relatives niya, and even dun sa friends niya, in Acts chapter 10, verse 7, balikan natin to. When he sent yung armies niya, I just want to put a highlight on this. When the angel spoke to him, had depart, uh, him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those who attended him. Try to imagine with me. The main reason, according to some scholars, the main reason this devout soldier were able to worship the one through God is because of the influence of Cornelius. Even back then, God is using him. Akala mo lang, hindi ka ginagamit ng Panginoon. Akala mo lang, walang silbi yung mga pagpipreach mo ng gospel. But in reality, you just don't know that you are planting seeds already to those people around you. Unang-una, to your family. You know what? Kanina po, um, as I end, kanina po, uh, I was taking a bath. Tapos yung anak ko, nak 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 katok ng katok, da 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 ko, uh, uh, bibi bubu, kasi tawag siya na bubu, bibi bubu, katok siya na, wait lang, I, I, I'm taking a bath, da 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 da, wait lang bibi, I'm taking a bath, da 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 da, alam mo yung parang naiinis na nga ako ng konti eh, kasi kulit ako, hindi ako makatapos sa, pag, sa pagligo, da 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 ko, why baby, uh, ano to, nasa loob ako na siya, why baby, happy Father's Day, Tapos, nun narinig ko yung Happy Father's Day, gusto kong umiyak sa banyo. Tapos sabi ko sa kanya, Thank you, baby. I love you. Tapos, after nung sinabi ko, I love you, I love you too, Dada. Tapos, nawala na yung katok. Parang gusto ko, katok ka pa, katok ka pa, katok ka pa. Parang gusto ko pa, tapos gusto ko pa marinig na yon. Tapos, nun narinig ko yung pagkalabas ko, hinag ko talaga siya. Tapos, sabi ko sa kanya, I love you so much. I love you so much. And I'll do everything that I can in order for me to share my life to you. Naramdaman ko yung ganong feeling sa anak ko. How much more kaya si God para sa'yo? That He will do everything. He will orchestrate everything from Cornelius to Peter for him to experience who God is, from Cornelius to his relatives, to his family, and even to, the, uh, to, to that army. God can use you. God can even send you. And God can even mold you. That's why I'm going to leave you with this message. Despite all the responsibilities of Cornelius, he still prioritized being a helpful influence of the gospel to his family, his servant, and to his soldier. Priority. And I hope as we go out in this place, I pray that despite all the responsibility we have as a father. I know you're so busy. I know you're doing everything for your family. I know that you are trying to, 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 to put foundation and pillars for your family. But let's prioritize being a helpful influence of the gospel on our own, on our family, our relatives, and on the people that we know. Take every opportunity that God is giving you. Why? Because God is so gracious for us to experience His love. And He is so gracious for us to share that love to others. Can I ask everyone to stand up? We're going to take this time. We're going to worship God. Maybe some of you here you're still in a process of contemplating, God, kaya mo ba akong gamitin with all the things that's happening to my life? God, blessing ba ako? God, may encounter ba kita? God, sobrang busy ko, hindi ko talaga kaya. But as we worship, I would like you to take this opportunity to set aside everything. Set aside mo lahat. Open your hearts to God. And as you open your hearts to God, let God speak in and through you. We're going to worship God. And as we worship Him, let's fix our eyes on Him alone. 
the author and perfecter of our faith. song is all about God is being holy meaning set apart and I really believe God would like to set apart us from how the world is defining everything maybe you are here and you know that you don't have a father figure even in the past or even right now or kaya meron kayo mga things na experience sa father mo na until now it's, ba- it's, it's haunting you until now you, it's you're having a hard time to forgive your father. Until now, every time na rinig mo yung pangalan ng tatay mo, hindi mo kaya. Naiinis ka, napipikod ka, or maybe your father abandoned you. And there's so much pain, so much hurt that's creeping in in your hearts. And even to the point that you don't know if you can be a, a, a great uh, dad or even a great mom because of what had happened in the past. And right now, God is telling you that I want you to set apart that emotion. I want you to lay it down on my, the cross. Lay it down on my feet. Because what I want you to do is to look up to me as your heavenly father. Because your father is limited. But I am unlimited. And I'm willing to provide everything for you. If you are here, you want to 
receive that forgiveness. You want to forgive your father. And you want to be reconciled. Everybody close your eyes, bow your heads. If that is you, I would like you to raise your hand and I'm going to pray for you. Wow, God says that hand. God says that hand. God says that hand. Lord, you see the hand of these people acknowledging, Lord, there's pain, there's hurt in me. Lord, I pray that right now, let the Holy Spirit work in and through them. I pray that they may find peace and security in you. That it is you who will give them the ability to forgive. That they will choose to forgive the way you forgave them, God. Lord, marami marami po salamat. Whatever things that happened in the past, I know that you can erase that memory and give them a new memory, Lord, that is connected of who you are in their lives, God. Lord, bless them, God. Thank you for everything they're doing. My name is Jesus. Amen. And also, look up here. If you're a father here, or even a parent, sometimes hesitant ka to share the gospel to your sons or to your daughters because, because of pride, because of ego, because you're not used to doing it, because you're afraid that you can be rejected by your family members. But right now, you know that God is speaking on your behalf that God can use you. And now you are making a commitment. Lord, kahit mahirap, kahit hindi ako sanay, kahit hindi nga ako mapagsabi na I love you, anak ko, but this time, I want you to minister to me. I want you to work in and through me. I want to be used by you. I want to be used by you to my family, to my relatives, to my, to my, to my, to my office mate. And if this, your, if this is your cry to God, that you want to be used by God, I want you to raise your hand and I'm going to pray for you. In the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Come on now. God is the hand. God is the hand. God is the hand. Lord, thank you for these people who are making a commitment that standing, starting today, they will take every opportunity for them to be a blessing to their family by preaching the gospel. Give them the word to speak and the mouth to share. Whatever fear that they have, take it away. In Jesus' name, amen. And finally, if you are here, katulad ng story na sinare ko sa inyo kanina, my daughter was knocking on the door. And the main reason kung bakit nagnanak yung daughter ko is for me to know na mahal niya ako. It's for me to know na gusto niya ako i-greet. You know what? God is knocking your hearts right now. The question is, will you open your hearts to Him? Will you accept Him as your Lord and Savior? As you open your hearts to Him, I'm telling you, your life will never be the same again. Your life will be redirected to the path na gusto niya para sa'yo. Everybody close your eyes and bow your head. If you are here, Maybe you just know God by name, but you don't have a real relationship with God. And you're saying right now, Lord, thank you for knocking in my heart. And today, I will open my heart and I will surrender everything to you. Be my Lord, be my master. If that is you, I would like you to raise your hand right now and let me pray for you. God sees that hand. Anyone? I know there's more. God sees that hand. If you would like to receive God as your personal Savior, for those people watching online, tuning online as well, and for those people who raised their hands, I would like you to pray after me. Lord, thank you for calling me in this place. It is not an accident. Thank you because I know that you forgave me already. And thank you, God, because I believe that I am a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Lord, bless them. Thank you for everything that you're doing. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen and amen. Can I just give a hand to God? For those people who raise their hands, kindly approach us. We will explain to you what the decision that you made. And at the same time, uh, I know that uh, I know that uh, lahat tayo dito, we're going to celebrate uh, Father's Day. Uh, later, po, right after, we will give something from, for, for you. And uh, let me just pick up a prayer of blessing to everyone. Can you just raise your hand? Lord, thank you for this time. 
an encounter with you. Thank you, God, for we know that we are blessed in you. We know that you can use us. Lord, we pray that we will always appropriate every promise that you've given us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and bring grace to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen and Amen. Maraming maraming po salamat and have a great uh, night. And all for those people tuning online, maraming maraming po salamat. Happy Father's Day again.